Well, I think the reason Steve asked me to do this to show y'all what I do. <laughs> anyway, this is a little house built on skids. Has the clamshell ends on it. It has a center vent crossways, which y'all may have talked about this morning on FK. So what we're going to do, you know, let's play like the, and it's going to be true, it's coming in cold weather, but anyway, we have planted, we have tomatoes in here planted, or lettuce, I mean, in here planted. It's going to get cold, and we've just planted some tomatoes down there. We've got to cover it tonight before, you know, before it gets cold. So we're going to move this house over the top of that one to protect those tomatoes. The lettuce will take a little bit of a freeze. And then we're going to stick a little house over the top of it, of this crop to save it on the next night when it gets colder. But anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to move this house to show you how to move it. This is a little 12, uh, 8 by 12 plus your clamshells, which is going to make it about uh, 22 feet probably long and 8 feet wide. This is just a little model of what we build in the 20 foot, the 14, the 20s, and the 26 wide. So you can get any size you want in this. You know, I haven't sold any of this size because this is just actually a model that we can haul completely together. So we're going to time this thing and see how long it takes us to move this house just to kind of have a little fun out of it. Okay, if you'll go ahead and unhook your anchors, boys, and get it unhooked, roll it up, get it on wheels, and let's see if we can move. Jackie, you time and see about how long we're doing. Okay. Imagine it has plastic film on it, okay? Yeah, that's good, <laughs> committee. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good, that's good. All right. All right, roll her up. All right, we're going to get it unhankered and pull it out of the ground. There, right, here we go. Now, we build these where we put these smaller ones on wheels. The, the 26 foot wide, we, we use them on a heavier skid and we just take a golf cart and pull them uh, like we do down in the bottom back down there. Uh, they're gonna go to their, we happen to already have our anchors down and we did this just so we wouldn't take all of your time today. But they'll set it down now and anchor it down and it'll be over the crop over there. But there you have your house that's uh, on, on wheels, can be moved down. now. You can anchor it down at the at the second bow. We anchor that down right there, and then you can still move that bottom one up and air, up and up and down to get the vent, the air underneath it. Or in the winter time, when you're not going to uh, be opening it, you can you can anchor the bottom one also. We put two chains on it so that that won't happen, and we can have it anchored down all the way. We got any questions while they're anchoring it down or anything? The wheels come off. We take two screws off each side and jerk them off, and they're gone. So it won't take but just a minute. Richard, you want to grab your uh, drill and take those two screws out and pull them apart, and it'll be there. You know, in the spring you can you can start out with a crop of lettuce in in January or something. Uh, we usually put our tomatoes out, and we usually put them out February the 20th. This last spring, I just couldn't wait because February the 5th, it was so pretty and warm. So I put tomatoes out February the 5th in these little high tunnels and didn't have any trouble. Now, three years ago, I did that on February the 20th. I put tomato plants out, and guess what? On March the 7th, it got down to 16 degrees and 10 inches of snow outside. So what did we do? We went inside, and let's play like this is plastic rather than shade cloth. Uh, the school, the church was using this up here, I think, to, for kids to play in. But anyway, this is plastic, so we can put these little bows in like this along here and close both ends up, and that'll give you another 8 degrees temperature from what is outside. So we were at 16 degrees, and a house makes 8, that'd be 24, and 8 would be 32. And then you could put another layer right over the top of these little, these little small plants, and that'll give you another one. That'll get you up to about 40, 42 degrees in 16 degree weather. And so that's the way you do this without using any 
electri in electricity or gas. In December of '99, my gas in yeah, December of '99, my gas bill was twenty-one thousand one hundred and twenty dollars for the one month, and I knew that was the point. That was the breaking point when gas went high. Well, natural gas went high also. We knew that point. We had to start changing from heating. We were keeping houses at sixty and seventy degrees because gas was cheap and we weren't paying much. But all of a sudden, just overnight, it blew up on us. So we stopped that by shutting half of our houses down, cramming the half of it into all the other half of the houses, and dropping our temperature down to about 40, 42 degrees, keeping them from freezing. In the next month, I think my bill was $12,000, and I was pretty happy with that. But guess what? Six months later, they sent me another $18,000 bill. And I called them. I said, for what? They said, well, our meter must have broke back there in February or January, and so we're charging for that. And I said, it didn't break. I shut it off because I moved the plants out of the houses, but they wouldn't take that. They can still make you pay that if they think they want what you did last year, what you do this year, they'll make you pay that. So that's the reason I, from that point on, I said, I'm going to learn how to grow without using any fuel. And that's what I do. And we can, like I say, we took it down to 16 degrees and then lose a tomato plant in March of 7th. So you can do that. Lettuce, you know, lettuce, spinach, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, green onions, radishes, those things like that will take down close to freezing. Uh, you got to get, you know, your potatoes, you're going to have to have it a little warmer on your potatoes. Uh, corn, you'd have to have it a little warmer on the corn. Uh, peppers and tomatoes, you know, you got to, you're going to have to go even warmer. And that's the reason we put the third layer on the, on the tomatoes and peppers. To get them through and we don't push peppers like we do tomatoes we like to be the first one in april to have the ripe tomatoes while everybody else is putting their plants outside and so that's the benefit of having these high tunnels you know you can get an earlier crop off you can be protected from the freeze you can protect from the wind the rain like they talked yesterday all day long but we can't talk enough about this this is what we've got to do i can remember and i've been doing this for 55 years I can remember about 30 years ago, we had our first freeze at Halloween. Never had froze at Halloween. It's always down towards the Thanksgiving before it ever froze. And so that started us to thinking we got to do something because we can't afford to heat, use fuel from Halloween all the way into, uh, well, May now because we used to, we used to take tomato plants when you put them out April the 15th, you were pretty safe. You might have to put a little hot cap or a little newspaper over the top of them to protect them. But just two years ago, I had a customer right over the river over in the, the other side of Pottsboro. Uh, May the 17th, he's got his tomato plants froze. So you see what we're happening. We're getting cold weather up and down, up and down from Halloween all the way to the middle of May now. So that's another reason we have to have these high tunnels. Plus excessive rain. They're talking about we're getting two inches of rain or better this weekend which is not bad, but if we was getting 10 or 12, we'd sure like to have it under a high tunnel. Now I'll create Ed, any questions now? It doesn't bother me that this is on turf. What I would do, I would lay down this black ground cover, which lets water go through it if it rains or something. I would put it down over this and just move this house on top of it. And guess what? That grass won't come up. We make this, we usually make this uh, cover a little wider and a little longer and that way you don't have to weed it right up around your house. You've got it pretty neat, and we just didn't do any of that today, but we could. But anyway, that uh, it's just, you know, one way to go. We can put these in here instantly, or we can move into another house. And I'm not knocking raised beds. I mean, Steve's been a raised bed grower, but I was over here last summer, and guess what? He was sweating like everything, putting these in, and he didn't do it in one afternoon. It took him several days to put these in. And if he gets ready, <laughs> but if he gets ready now to do something else with that, it's, he's not going to do one afternoon to tire those down, get that soil out of there. And and I, I'm not knocking it. I mean, it's a good way to go, but it's not a fast way to go. There's a lot of work involved in it, and there's work involved in these buckets. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you can move them in and out with a front end loader, or we got a cart that we just stick underneath there, and somebody hooks onto it and takes off out through there, you know. And so you can move them that way. So, I mean, there's more and more things we can do. There's no, there's endless what we can do to this stuff.
we're just learning a little every every year. Okay. I'll shut up, Dave. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Democrats and Republicans can live together, like containers and French beds. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>